Welcome everyone to a new tutorial. Today's design is based on the wonderful Rangoli art of India where they will use colored sand or chalk to make these beautiful designs on the floor. And we're going to speak a little bit about the color wheel today. Uh, if you were going to be using analogous colors, they would be next to each other on the color wheel. Like uh, this stone here was done in the red and orange and yellow and these are next to each other on the color wheel. Another way of making a design is to use complementary colors from the color wheel and these would be opposite each other. So this design I made, my Maui design, is based on shave ice and I have the orange and the blue on opposite sides of the color wheel. Another design you can use are monochromatic colors and these are different shades or tones of the same color and an example of this would be this uh, stone that I did all in shades of green to make a, a calming effect. And this is another monochromatic one done in pink, just different shades of pink. But today we're going to be trying something a little different. We're going to be doing what's called a split complementary design. So we'll be using a main color and then using a color opposite on the wheel. So we'll be doing purple and yellow, a little yellow orange in there too. And then we're going to be adding the third color, the magenta. So it's a split complementary design and these you'll find if you can do these on a color wheel and mark it into a design for yourself, you'll find that they're very pleasing to the eye. So I'm going to be using a stone that I made from the mold from the Happy Dotting Company and I painted it black and I have my General's Charcoal White Pencil to mark the center dot. And this is her matching stencil that fits right over the top very nicely and you can mark your guidelines with that. You can also get a larger stencil to use for larger natural stones, but if you don't have access to the stencil, you can always just use something round that you have laying around the house, something that fits on top of your stone or your canvas or whatever you're using, and just trace around it, and then you can use the same object to trace that on a piece of paper and then cut it out and then you simply fold it in half and fold it in half again and then snip off the point and open it up and you'll be able to use this to get the center of your design but first you gotta paint the, the rock black <laughs> or whatever your base color is. So I'm using the Martha Stewart Beetle Black Satin to paint this stone. And then we're back to the art stone here using Ginger's silicone mold and I'm just going to be marking the cross guidelines here, not using all the guidelines, I just need a few. And then back to the stone, you can use your little paper pattern to mark the center spot. It's very easy. And then to get your guidelines, you simply refold the paper, snip off the corners, and then you'll have little notches where you can place in a mark, and then simply use a, a folded piece of paper to bend over your stone and use that to connect your guidelines. like to go low tech here so everybody can do it and if you need more guidelines just fold your uh, your paper pattern in half again and then uh, snip off the corners again and open it back up and you can use those notches to get even more guidelines it's a very easy way to get nice symmetry in your stone and you can use it on any type of stone or any type of canvas. And this General's Charcoal White Pencil will come right off with a, a damp Q-tip when you're done. So I'm going to be mixing up paints here. This is very important. This is a question I get a lot because your paint consistency really determines the quality of your design. So I'm mixing up some 
uh, heavy bodied acrylics, which are in the big tubes. They're heavy like toothpaste. And then some iridescent ones, the Arteza, in the bottles. And then in the small bottles are the Liquitex, uh, excuse me, the uh, golden fluid acrylics. They're like uh, drops of water almost. And then I've got the pouring medium, and I've got some pointy Q-tips for when I make mistakes, which is inevitable. And I've got some round toothpicks that are going to help me uh, drag the dots today. And then I have some dotting tools from Mark's Mandalas. So I'm going to start mixing up here using these heavy bodied acrylics. Now these go a long way. They're very thick like toothpaste and you only need a little tiny bit because you're going to be adding the pouring medium to this which is really just clear acrylic paint and that will uh, help you thin these out to the right consistency. I'm going to be making four shades of orange, uh, a light, medium, and dark, and then kind of a yellow orange. So I'm just mixing these together. I'm going to be adding in some white. And the reason that I start with the heavy bodied acrylics is that I want this design to have more texture and body to it. I don't want any peaks in my dots. I don't want my dots to crack. But I do want them to look thick and luscious and, and almost like uh, like jewels or, or drops of uh, frosting. So now I'm adding some of the pouring medium. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio. Usually add a little bit more depending on the thickness. Um, if the paint is still stuck to your brush, you need to add a little bit more. If I'm finding I'm adding more pouring medium than I really want to, I will add drops of the golden fluid acrylic paints, which will boost the pigment saturation. So when the paint dries it will still be as vibrant and glossy as it is right out of the bottle. So I'm just going from well to well in my palette here mixing up different shades of orange and I'm adding a little bit of this iridescent paint, these wonderful Arteza uh, iridescent acrylics just to give more elasticity and um, uh, body to my paint. And I'll be adding a few more shades to that as we work along, but those are our basic colors. So it can really help to test your paint first because you want to know how it's going to behave on your project. So I usually will test it out on a piece of black uh, cardstock. And here's my yellow. I wanted to test the yellow because yellow is just famous for, for being translucent, for, for losing its vibrancy. So I wanted to make sure it was really going to show up and be a, a, an opaque color against this black background. And now I'm just testing the dot cross pattern I'll be using around my center dot. I want to make sure that my small dots are going to behave and stay in place once I've placed them. Sometimes you just don't know until you really get started and your dots start to ooze out and they start to touch and sort of bleed into each other and it's just a mess. So it's good to practice it first. It's also good because you can practice your spacing. This is a fairly large center dot I've made here and I can pretty easily place in these dots. I make the cross pattern and then I do a midline and then two on either side. I have plenty of space there and I'm finding that's too much space. I think it looks too open so I'm gonna do a size smaller probably about two sizes smaller there in the center dot and try it again. Again I'm trying out my orange paint while I'm doing this I'm gonna do a dot to the top, a dot to the bottom, one to each side in a cross pattern and then I fit one in the middle and then one on either side. And I can see that with my toothpick I can fit those in there. None of the dots are touching, but there's a lot less space between them. So it looks a little better to my eye to have less space. So I thought, well, if that's working, maybe I'll go one size smaller, try out my purple paint, and I'm trying the same thing, dot on either side to make a cross. I find the midline, put a dot there, and then snug in two more. I can just barely get them in there, but not quite because um, they're starting to get a little too crowded. And with this particular paint, I want to uh, make sure that you're really not touching. So once I've decided on the uh, size tool I want for my center dot, 
I think it would be good to practice some of the dot and drag technique. If you have never done this before, you really should practice before you try it on your stone or your canvas. You just make a large dot. You're going to load it with lots and lots of paint and then drag it. You can use a toothpick to drag. You can use another tool, a pointy tool to drag that out. And you can try dragging it in a curve. And you want to make sure that your paint is following you, that it's grabbing onto your tool, and that you can pull it all the way down without it separating. So practice that before you move on to your stone. So I'm using Mark's Mandalus today. I decided on the size 13 for my center dot. You can use whatever tool you have. And then I'm using a ballpoint tool. This is actually a polymer clay sculpting tool that I'm using to load more paint onto it and just transfer it to that center dot. And I'm just loading and loading and loading, just piling up the paint. And the surface tension is actually going to hold that all together. And I had one little bubble there, so I always keep a, a pin or a needle handy so I can pop any bubbles before they they form a skin and dry because your acrylic paints are going to form a skin when they're exposed to the air. So now I'm going to try my, uh, my first row of dots using those guidelines, getting them as close to that center dot as I can. And I've made the cross. And then I'll do the mid, the mid mark and then fill in on either side. But I could tell already that this paint was not behaving. I had added a little too much of the pouring medium and it was starting to ooze. The longer it sat there, the larger these dots were getting and they were just starting to, to go all over the place and be really messy. So the only thing to do is just take them off. So I've got my little Q-tips handy here for just this purpose. Don't be afraid to just work and work at getting that center dot the way you want it. Because it'll drive you crazy if you get all the way to the end of your design and you, you still don't like that center dot. And I added just a little touch of blue to my purple to make it a little darker. I found that it was a little bit too violet and I wanted to make sure I was really getting across the aisle on my color wheel. And now I've added a little bit more of the heavy bodied medium to that light purple and my dots are behaving and they are staying in place. So now I can go ahead and go all the way around my plump fat center dot. And you can see as I turn it, it's nice and plump. It stays in place, it's not running all over the place, and that's because it has that heavy body medium mixed in with it. Okay, now we're gonna be starting on the dot and drag technique. I'm starting with my brightest yellow. I'm really loading up that dot as thick as I can make it. And then I'm gonna use my toothpick to drag it down that guideline toward the center of the mandala. Then I'm gonna skip a line and go to the next guideline, do the same thing, load up the dot and drag it down. And when I say load up the dot, I'm just sticking it back in the paint so more paint clings to the tool. And then I just transfer that to the dot and the other paint kind of pulls it off. Now I'm just going back and I'm reloading that dot with a little bit more paint. Since I dragged it, the dot got a little flat. And I want these to be very thick, plump dots. That's the whole point of this Rangoli design. They will put a, a very large handful of, of sand or colored chalk or colored flour or colored rice, put a handful of that on the ground, and then they will drag it with their finger or with their tool uh, to make these beautiful designs. So we're kind of doing the same thing, only using paint. Okay, now we're switching to the medium orange, doing the same thing. Dragging that down to the center. And then reloading the dot to make sure it's nice and plump. And now I'm using the yellow-orange shade 
making two smaller dots on either side of the yellow and then carefully dragging those down, giving it a little bit of a curve, sort of starting on the outside of the dot and dragging it toward the yellow line. And then, of course, reloading those dots. And you can't see here, but I have a piece of wet paper towel that I've folded up that's off to my side, and I use that to wipe off my tool in between each paint color. And this is the lightest shade of orange that I have. And I'm reloading those dots to make sure that they're nice and plump and textured. And you can see how this is starting to work out. It's almost a fleur-de-lis design. And now we're going to be adding this beautiful magenta. I've found that by adding the golden fluid magenta to any craft paint in this shade will really boost your color and give you a nice bright color. It's wonderful. Magenta is used a lot in Rangoli designs. And I'm reloading those dots, making them very thick and plump. I popped a couple bubbles with my needle. You can see how those are sitting up there just like buttons. So now I'm going to be placing a small white dot next to the magenta dot right in the center. And then I'm going to walk around the magenta dot using Mark's smallest tool. You can also use a toothpick for this. I just find that Mark's smallest tool, um, the tapering of it, just gives me a perfect result. Each dot is just a little bit smaller and I feel like I can walk the dots forever with this tool. The thing about a toothpick is that it will, because it's made of wood, it will eventually start to swell up and absorb the paint and then you get kind of a, a messy dot, but not so with these plastic tools. So all the way around in that beautiful classic dotted petal design. And I want to make sure that my next row, uh, my next Rangoli row is even. So what I'm going to do is use a large tool that's going to fit in between the two petals and just mark the edge of it. And that's going to give me a, a starting point for my next dot to direct. I'm just going to carefully mark that all the way around the stone. And then we're back to the bright yellow. I'm using a size 9 tool for this. I'm just loading that with as much paint as I can. And I'm going to be dragging that toward the center. Now this is a longer distance than the first row. So you've got to be a little bit more patient. Just carefully drag that down. And then skip a line. Do another one. And your fourth one here. Drag that all the way down to the point, but not touching. And then we'll be repeating the same thing, only using the brightest shade of orange that I have. Again, the Golden Fluid Vat Orange is a wonderful paint to add to any craft paint to really boost your pigment saturation. It can be really tough in regular craft paints to get a vibrant orange and a vibrant yellow. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> they tend to look great in the bottle, and then you get them on your design, and they dry, and they're just kind of, uh, they look like they've been sitting out in the sun too long and they're faded. But uh, if you add these you'll really get great colors. So now I'm using that yellow orange again on either side of the bright yellow dot and drag. And when I'm doing the dot and drag technique I, I like to use um, 
just a tiny bit of space in between. I don't like to have the paint colors touching. Other artists do, and it, it gives a, a different effect. It's, it looks almost more like quilting. But I like to leave a little bit of space there. And again, I'm reloading those dots after I've dragged them so they stay nice and plump when they are dry. Now here's the really tricky part. <laughs> this part uh, would be great to practice on a piece of paper before you try it on the stone. We're going to drag another row, believe it or not. I'm going to get it snugged right in there. And this is why you want to make sure that your paint is behaving. You don't want to have a surprise here. You want your paint to stay where you want it to stay and to move with your tool. And you can drag it right into that space without touching anything, believe it or not. It takes practice, so don't be discouraged. If you can't do this right off the bat, it just takes practice. I couldn't either. I remember when I first saw this on uh, some Pinterest picture, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I could never do that. But yeah, you can. It just takes practice. It's fun to challenge yourself to something that looks too difficult and to just not give up and it's helpful you know to watch tutorials and and get some tips just figuring out why doesn't it work for me and a lot of it is paint consistency it's just getting paint that will behave and to work with your tools and some people will even use a paintbrush to do this part but I'm finding that my toothpicks are really my friend <laughs> in these little tiny spaces. So watch, I can load that with more paint that you think is going to fit. But because this paint is mixed up well and has the right elasticity with adding that iridescent paint, it's behaving, it's staying in place, and yet it's retaining that wonderful uh, pigment saturation when it's dry. It doesn't crack, it doesn't fade and you really do get a beautiful result. So reloading those dots again before they dry, before they form skin. And we've got our second Rangoli row. Looking good. Look how glossy and pink and wonderful that is. So once again, I'm measuring the tool, just making a little mark. I want to make sure this is all nice and even. And if you want to help your, your paints dry a little bit faster, you can uh, just gently blow them with a blow dryer to help form that skin over the top. So now I'm going to back to that darkest shade of purple that I used for the center dot. And I'm putting a dot right on my, my mark there that I just made and um, getting that nice and thick. And then I'm going to drag it toward the center. Gets a little tricky here on the outside of your stone because of the angle. Your paint will want to follow gravity so you want to make sure that you've you've got enough thickness there that it's not going to run and then once you have all the purple ones done you're just going to do a magenta on either side to fill in that space and then reloading those dots after I drag them and then I'm adding two little white dots in that space. I thought there was just too much black there. So just two little white dots. Fill that in, make it look a little better. And now a white top dot on each of the yellow areas. Just helps to brighten up the yellow even more.
And now I've added some white to that magenta paint that I mixed up earlier. And I'm going to use that as a pink top dot. And then adding some yellow top dots on the yellow row. This just helps to set them apart. So we definitely have four yellow rows and then four of, of the orange rows. Just gives the design a little bit more dimension. dimension. So now I've mixed up uh, a little bit of red into my brightest orange paint just to give it a little bit more depth, a little richer, and I want it to show up in contrast to the bright orange. And we're putting those on the, the orange row. I'm using a little bit of the golden fluid vat orange right out of the bottle to add a little bit of the orange top dots on the orange row on the second petals. So you can really see that I have four distinct crosses there. And then I'm going to be adding a light purple top dot to the center. I'm going to let that dry for a couple hours so it's dry to the touch and then I'm going to dot and drag the top dots on the outer Rangoli lines here. Just a light purple over the dark purple just using a toothpick to dot and drag that and then using that light pink to dot and drag on the magenta. And then just a couple little white top dots to finish off. And we are done. Here's our beautiful, glossy Rangoli design. These are often used um, to put on the floor in front of doorways for good luck. It's just gorgeous. The colors of India are just unmatched anywhere in the world, I think. I just, I just love it. So when this dries, the paint is wonderfully textured. You can see how much depth it has. It hasn't lost any of the pigment saturation. And I would just wanted to show you a couple other color combinations I used. This was a purple green. Again, these are complementary colors on opposite sides of the color wheel. And then I also did a monochromatic in just blue. This was my blueberry splash that I did for a friend and on a large stone for her. So I hope you'll try some of your color combinations and see what you can come up with. Thank you for watching everybody.